Today I will talk about .NET MAUI and dependency injection, something that has improved a lot since Summer Informs. Stay tuned! Hi and welcome to a new video about .NET MAUI. I'm working with a series of videos with .NET MAUI, so if you missed my other videos, you can go to my playlist with the name .NET MAUI and watch all of them. And please subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. There will be more videos. I try to put at least one video out every week. Today we will talk about dependency injection. If you have done some reforms development, you know that there was not that good support of that in there. You had the dependency service, but uh, I would say I never really used it. I tried it out in the beginning, but it never fits my needs. So I often added a third part library like Autofuck and I also have some helper packages like in tiny MVVM, for example, there was some helper method, helper classes to handle dependency injection. But with .NET MAUI, they have aligned it more with .NET. So that is what I will show you today. So let's dive into the code. So here we have a .NET MAUI project. It's just created from the .NET MAUI template. I've created a view model and a, a service class, but they are more or less empty right now. So if we go to our MAUI program, this is the point where run once the MAUI app starts up. It's like the startup.cs if you have done .NET Core development before. And here we have our MAUI app builder. And that is the one that we can use for register our classes and services into the dependency injection container. So if we go here, we can type builder.services. And here you can see we have iService collection. And here we can add our views, view models, services, repositories, whatever we want. So let's do that. Let's add the views and the view models that we already have here first. So we can add a singleton if we want it to be created just once, or we can add them as transient if we want to have them added every time. So let's add tra transient of our main view model. Just like this, and we can add the the view as well as the transient main page. That's, that's the default one that are created with the templates. We can use that. So now we can go here and we can add the view model as a constructor injection in the page. And that is supported when you work with shell. That was not the case when you work with Xamarin Forms. That's new with .NET MAUI. So if we want to have a view model to our page, we can do that just by adding main view model, main view model, and then we can set binding context to it. Just like this. Before we run this, we can just take a short look at the shell file here. It's just one page added, the main page. This is what comes with the default templates, but that is enough for trying this out. So we can set a breakpoint here in the constructor of the main page to see that we get a view model. And then we can try to run it. So now we can see that we hit the breakpoint here and main view model is injected here. And we have an instance of the dependency injection demo, that is my project, and the .main model. And now we can set binding context. So that's fine. Here we have it. So now if we also want to inject, like say, the data service into the view model, we can go here and add that to the view model. I data service, because that class has an interface. Then we can assign a field just like that, that is enough, put a breakpoint here, remove the breakpoint there, and then we go here to the MAUI program class, and then builder.services, add, you can say, 
single film this time, and then we say the data, I data interface should be resolved to the data service class, just like this. Now we can run this and see if we can get an instance of the I data service into the view model. So let's press run. Yes, here we have a data service. If we go to the data service, we can see here that I also have another construction that takes a name into it. In this case, we cannot use that constructor when we registered it as we did. But if we want to have this as a singleton and want to have a specific instance of it, we can also do that. So if you go to Maui program and instead remove this and set it like that, we can just pass a new data service into it here, like Daniel. And this will be the same when you run it after you have configured the container, but you are able to do some more customization of what you register. So we can go here and put a breakpoint again. Yes, it's still there. So let's run it. And now you can see that we have a data service. And if we look here, we can see that name is Daniel. So that makes it possible to also use classes that don't have an empty constructor. So this is how you can use dependency injection in .NET MAUI. It's really simple. And that's the reason why this was a short video. But if you liked the video, press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and there will be more videos already next week. See you then. Bye bye.